So it's it's twelve oh five now in the interest of everybody's time uh, over this lunch hour for most of us here in Alberta anyways. Um, I think we'll get started and um, yeah so I'm Robert Lacey. Uh, those of you who know me I'm the founder of Delta Remediation. Delta Remediation is an Edmonton Alberta based company that works in environmental protection and remediation. I'm joined here with Troy Beaver. Uh, Troy is one of the founders of Halen Hardy. He's calling in from the U.S. And uh, yeah, we've got people from all over the world with us today. So really exciting to be here. Uh, Troy, maybe go to the next slide. Yeah, so I just wanted to, uh, you know, this is our, our, my first webinar that we've done. It's actually uh, really interesting. I've been on a lot of these webinars as of late, especially with COVID and everything that's going on. This is the first one that we've done. So hopefully it goes smooth. Uh, what we've suggested is that um, any questions that you have, just write them into the chat. Um, you know, Troy and I think that this presentation is probably going to be about 45 or 50 minutes. Uh, if we have a million questions, I'm going to, I'm just going to go through and read the ones that I think will be most relevant for the audience. Uh, hopefully we can get through all of them. If we do get through all of the chat questions and we, we don't want to have more of an in-depth discussion, I think if you can just use the raise hand button at the bottom of your screen, um, that way I'll know that you have, you know, something you'd like to discuss with us and I can, you know, allow you to, to speak. And so, yeah, basically will be presentation, uh, then questions in the chat. And if we still have any time, uh, we'll open it up for, for discussion. And Troy and I will be here after the hour is done. I just don't want to keep people waiting. Uh, you know, I want to get through everything as we can. We do appreciate your time here uh, with us today. So that's it for housekeeping. Um, I want to, you know, we had such a great uh, turnout for this webinar. I, I couldn't help but, uh, you know, have a couple slides on Delta Remediation, my company. Uh, so we'll spend, uh, you know, five minutes there. And then Troy will be running the majority of the presentation, speaking of Halen Hardy's product line, which of course Delta Remediation is going to be distributing uh, in the Canadian and global marketplaces. So Delta Remediation, we're like I said, an Alberta company. We started off on a on a service uh, side of uh, of providing bioremediation. You know, our our background is actually in circular economy models. You know, trying to find value out of waste. Uh, we have an industrial recycling division where we take uh, concrete and asphalt and create an aggregate product out of that. Um, so we've always, you know, seen opportunity to improve how remediation is done, especially here in Western Canada. Uh, our journey has, you know, allowed us to use products in very difficult environments. We've been as far north as the Arctic Circle and as far south as Africa. Um, I've already mentioned that, you know, we have a background in, in civil earthworks and, and recycling. And what that has allowed us to do is really take sort of cutting edge bioremediation technology and apply it in the field and then, and then really, you know, move forward with sort of a continuous improvement. Our biologics formulation, uh, we're, we're, we're always tweaking it. We're making it more uh, usable for the, for the application and finding different ways in which we can incorporate it in different industrial verticals. But essentially what we have created with biologics is an amplified natural process. So the, the microorganisms that we use are not genetically modified. We just have the ability to culture them into populations that are orders of magnitude more than you'd ever find in nature. And that's how we can turn sites around typically within one season. You can go to the next slide, Troy. So, um, you know, we're, we're probably most well known for our microbes, the biologics microbes. Of course, that's a critical aspect to the success we have with bioremediation. Uh, but we do have some beneficial chemistries that we use uh, from time to time. The chemistries that we use are completely separate from the organisms. So we do have a, a biological surfactant. It's biodegradable in 28 days, but it is a separate component. Uh, for instance, for surface water applications, we wouldn't use a surfactant because we know surfactants act as dispersants, just sort of making the problem go away uh, while not really dealing with it. Uh, so it is, it is important to note that while we have these additional beneficial chemistries, uh, every project design is unique uh, given the circumstances. And, and our background in actually doing the field work has really allowed us to develop unique ways in how we do the application. Uh, you know, we, we have a saying here that remediation is a contact sport, and I mean that for all remediation, there's no, there's no magic. Uh, so getting even distribution of the technology throughout the soil matrix is really important. And uh, our advanced application process allows us to achieve great distribution with our technology. Go to the next slide, Troy. Uh, recently, in 2020, we launched a, uh, a field screening kit called Screen Logics. 
Uh, essentially, this is a kit that allows users to detect hydrocarbons in soil samples in real time. Uh, you know, certainly not something that is going to take away lab. We rather see this as a tool that you can use so that you can invest in lab. You know, we've gotten feedback from consultants that, you know, drive three, four hours out to a site uh, to get delineation and they find out that they didn't actually reach the edge of their plume. Uh, using a tool like this will allow users to know that they're investing the right samples into their lab budget. And a uh, very, very simple process. Uh, happy to speak about biologics uh, or screen logics uh, after this presentation with Troy. Um, but yeah, like I said, I wanted to just have a quick plug on some of the things that, uh, that Delta is offering. Oh, I guess I have another slide on screen logics. Yeah, so, so essentially we, when we designed this product, we wanted to design it with the user in mind. So it is quite simple to use. Uh, it's quite economical. Uh, we've tested it on the most common petrochemical contaminants that we see in the field. And, um, you know, the one challenge with this is that we've created this product to have a range of detection. Uh, so it's, it's not going to pick up very minute amounts of volatiles in soils. However, we found that if you pair this technology with a volatile monitor, you can really get the full spectrum of contamination that you're going to be looking for, whereas a volatile is not going to pick up the heavier ends. And you can just see on that picture on the right, uh, that's just an example of the type of results you'd get uh, starting off at about 500 ppm going up to about 5000 ppm. Uh, many contamination, many contaminants rather are detectable at lower ppm than that, um, but we've, we've designed the, uh, the chart uh, around 500 to 5000. Yeah, thanks, Rob. Um, as Rob mentioned, uh, well, let me first say thanks to everyone for attending. I know uh, over the past year, I'm sure you've stared at your screen uh, long enough. So taking another hour out of your day uh, to stare some more at a presentation on a screen uh, is, is appreciated. And thanks to Rob and uh, Billy for putting, uh, putting this webinar together. I uh, really appreciate it. Uh, as Rob mentioned, my name is Troy Beaver. I'm partner with Halen Hardy. We are a manufacturer developer of some unique products in the spill and sediment control space uh, based out of Pennsylvania and the United States. Um, just uh, to give you an overview of, of how this presentation is going to go, I'm going to kind of give you a high level of, of what it is we do and then dive into some of the different technologies that we've developed for our customers, um, how they work, how they work differently than existing technologies on the market, and then some uh, field applications uh, where we see a lot of our customers using them. But from a very high level, uh, our mission at Halen Hardy has been since the start that uh, we help our customers simplify spill and sediment control. Uh, working with environmental and operations professionals by uh, three core uh, things, developing products uh, specifically for the outdoors that work rain or shine, uh, ensuring that uh, our products occupy minimal space in vehicles, equipment, and facilities, uh, and then also de designing products that deploy in about half the time of existing uh, products on the market, as well as much more easier to maintain than conventional options. Uh, three core areas that I'm going to get into today, uh, as well as the specific products within those. Um, three areas that we focus, spill cleanup and containment in the outdoors. Uh, that's anything from land-based spills in rainy conditions to containing and cleaning up spills on water or products for putting under uh, persistent leaks uh, of equipment that are located in the outdoors. Uh, second core area is uh, filtering oily sheen from stormwater inside of secondary containment structures. Um, so those of you that have secondary containment structures, as you well know, they tend to fill up with rainwater. And then the question becomes, can I just discharge that rainwater or um, do I have to call in some sort of vac truck or contractor to, uh, to haul it away? Um, and typically, uh, especially in the States, that's done by looking at it. Is there a visible sheen? If not, then it can be discharged, um, but that can become costly if there is a visible sheen. So we have products that help filter that sheen from stormwater inside of those containment structures, as well as filtering sheen, silt, and sediment from stormwater runoff. And that's anywhere uh, from around your storm drains, catch basins, to ditches and outfalls, um, around sites and industrial facilities. So just real quick to kind of give you a back a background on, on where we got started to kind of understand how our products got developed. We started uh, in the upstream oil and gas play 
and uh, mainly around the completion side of things. Um, as most of you know, hydraulic fracturing, fracking, um, or um, where they're pumping uh, hundreds of thousands of gallons of water down hole. They have a lot of equipment on site uh, that's powered by, uh, by oils and fuels. So they have a lot of leaks that are going on. Uh, obviously working without a roof over their head in the outdoors. So what comes into play a lot of times is precipitation uh, and different types of climates. Um, so what we found uh, in working with our clients was they tend to have a lot of water, tend to have a lot of uh, oil leaking from pieces of equipment and then sheen spreading around site. Uh, what were they typically doing? If you look on the left there, uh, they were using what you, uh, everyone has a different name for them, but your traditional oil only pads, diapers, uh, mats, uh, socks and booms, and uh, there just tended to be a lot of waste. Um, so when we started the company, uh, we were selling a lot of this stuff, but we found out that uh, there had to be a better way and figuring out what that better way was, was working with our clients and coming up with better solutions to make sure that they weren't producing as much waste as they were with traditional products. So in working with them, uh, we discovered uh, why existing solutions don't work and then backed into creating products that could help solve those problems of why existing solutions don't work. Um, so the two most common uh, types of products that they were using uh, were either what I just showed you before, traditional oil only pads, socks, booms, or they were using some sort of clay granular based product. Um, so when it rains outside, uh, why didn't these existing solutions work? Uh, pretty self-explanatory with clay. Clay is just essentially dirt. Uh, dirt, whenever it becomes wet, turns to mud and, uh, and easily washes away with the rainwater. So it has no uh, absorbent capacity left to actually absorb the spilled product. Um, it also becomes exponentially more difficult to clean up after the fact. Once it becomes saturated, it just becomes a mess. Uh, traditional socks, because they float on water, tend to get easily washed away by rainwater, uh, therefore not really uh, containing. They also, because they're round and you're trying to put them on a flat surface, the ground, uh, they tend to leave gaps and allow oil to easily escape underneath. Uh, they'll do an okay job, but most of the stuff gets underneath them, as well as where you're trying to join them, uh, tend to leave gaps and obviously water is gonna find the path of least resistance and get through those gaps. Uh, also with pads, uh, because they hate water, uh, they're just gonna easily, the water beads up on top and carries the oil over top of those pads. Uh, it will find some dry spots from time to time, but for the most part, most of the oil is carried on top of the water over top of the pads. Uh, therefore, rendering them pretty ineffective, especially whenever it's raining outside. Uh, they'll do an okay job whenever it's dry uh, day and you're just trying to pick up some bulk oil for the most part. But as you all know, working in the outdoors, it's not always dry. And uh, a lot of times accidents tend to happen whenever there's some sort of precipitation happening. The second area uh, that our customers were complaining about whenever we went to developing new products for them uh, was traditional materials tend to be bulky, big, and slow to deploy. Uh, especially working in the outdoors, a lot of these industries that we work with uh, tended to be mobile industries. So they're working out of trucks and trailers, uh, don't have huge warehouses or space to store stuff. So the complaint was always uh, for what I'm getting in the space that it takes up, it's just not enough. So if there's a way to, uh, to effectively create a product that addresses the issue of working in the outdoors, but also not taking up as much space, that would be just as beneficial to us. So our, uh, our landmark product that we uh, came out with at, uh, at the very beginning of our company uh, is what we call our Spiltration Husky Materials. Uh, this was developed to essentially address the two issues that I just mentioned, um, cleaning up spills on land, rain or shine. Uh, the way it works a little differently, and I'll show you some videos here in a second, is it absorbs oils and fuels, but it filters water. So instead of hating water like traditional products do and loving oil, it actually allows water to pass through it and then it holds on to the hydrocarbon based product. Um, I'll show you here in a, in a second as well. Uh, we found a way to package these products so that they take up 80% less space than traditional materials, therefore solving the problem of the space issues 
Also uh, an added benefit to the products, uh, they're actually made from 100% post-consumer waste. Um, so we actually are grabbing uh, carpet, clothing, and furniture before it goes to a landfill. We're pulling out the fibers uh, that we need to, uh, to make the product. So it's actually coming from 100% post-consumer waste. And then the final area um, that uh, has some applicability, especially to uh, long-term deployments of our products, uh, no UV degradation. So they will last uh, years in the outdoors without degrading in sunlight, which was another major issue of traditional uh, polypropylene products. So how does this filtration husky material work? Uh, here's just a couple snippets of uh, showing, uh, number one, the vertical pass-through ability of it. So here we just have a, a used motor oil and water mixture. Obviously, we're just using used motor oil here because of the visual uh, for video purposes, but it works on the range of hydrocarbons. But what you'll notice, uh, number one, uh, it absorbs the oil pretty quickly, but number two, uh, the water can actually pass through it uh, while holding on to the hydrocarbon-based product. And there's, uh, once picked up, you'll see inside there's an indicator paper to just show you that none of the oil actually got through. Not only from a vertical pass-through perspective, it also works uh, horizontally. So if you would use it for containment uh, options, so the issue you saw with traditional socks where uh, they're round and stuff tends to escape underneath. Our stuff tends to have a high profile, but be flat, therefore putting more surface area in contact with the ground, preventing anything from escaping underneath, but also allowing the water to pass through that way. So here, uh, as a containment option, it does a great job of holding the oil back, starting to absorb it in, allow the water to pass through, um, but not uh, allow the oil to escape. Uh, also, the nice thing about it is due to its flat profile, if you have higher flow, uh, you can actually stack them on top of each other. So if you do have a higher flow and you don't want anything escaping over top, you can easily stack them and what we also like to call uh, shingle them together um, to uh, give it as much absorption and uh, as much filtration as, as possible. So here you'll notice that uh, it does a great job of holding the oil back. Clean water can filter through. You can do your cleanup efforts on the upstream side, uh, preventing it from spreading to unwanted areas. Some different applications that our customers like to use this for. Um, the first is for uh, covering storm drains. Um, so in the event that you have a spill at a, uh, at a site and uh, it's raining outside, obviously uh, one of the things you want to make sure is that it doesn't get off site. So the best thing to do that way is quickly cover a storm drain. Nice thing about this is you're not going to create a flooding effect in your facility by completely shutting off the storm drain, but you're still able to capture the oil or fuel while allowing the clean rainwater to escape off site. Should you have a larger drain than just a single rug can cover, or you have more uh, oil and fuel than a single rug can handle, you can layer them on top of each other and easily uh, capture all that. Second area uh, where this product tends to have great applicability is uh, containing steering stacking. So again, you saw in the uh, earlier video, uh, it does a good job in the trough, but this is just a real world example of how it works. So here you can stack them on top of each other. Uh, again, just uh, based on the amount of product that you're trying to capture, you may need some extra, but the nice thing is you can easily contain them, make sure it's not escaping, stack them, and make sure you're absorbing all the product while allowing clean water to filter through and evacuate from your site without flooding it. Here's just another example of ways to channel the spill, uh, keeping it away from storm drains and sensitive areas. Um, in the event that obviously there's always going to be a low spot of where the water's trying to head, um, in the event that there is a low spot and you need to stack them, you can stack them while uh, again, allowing the water to quickly filter through. And then the final area, uh, which is the traditional filtration husky materials that our, pro our uh, customers told us they had major problems with was removing sheen uh, from wet pavement. Uh, a lot of times they were spreading a lot of clay kitty litter on top of it, and then it was just an added mess and cleanup time uh, that wasn't needed. 
the nice thing about this uh, product is the sponge-like nature to it also allows it to easily get tamped down into the cracks and crevices of pavement or concrete and just lift uh, the oil or sheen uh, directly out of that pavement. So in a matter of, of seconds, you can tamp it down and, and quickly pick it up and remove that sheen uh, from the cracks and crevices of the pavement without the added cleanup of, of clay or any other granular based product which are traditionally used uh, in those scenarios. And then just some other uses, uh, they work also great, not only on just filtering, but you know, it's, if you do have just a bulk uh, amount of product that you need to sop up, they're gonna work just as well on sopping up that uh, bulk product, as well as we get into large applications where uh, things have already maybe reached, uh, reached a ditch or an outfall. And uh, folks like to line the ditches and outfalls to allow the water to filter through um, while trying to prevent that from traveling any further downstream from where it is currently. And then speaking to, uh, to the space savings aspect due uh, to the sponge-like nature of the product, um, it has the unique ability to be compressed and then packaged into smaller packages. So if you're looking at the picture on the left here, uh, those are five of the 32 inch by 48 inch uh, rugs that you were seeing for covering the storm drain before they come packaged on the left here is how they can come packaged to you. So if you do have uh, issues with space savings or if you're in a remote areas where shipping costs are a concern and you wanna get more product to you in a less space, uh, the nice thing about this is it can be compressed down, take up about 80% less space than traditional materials, um, but also, the unique ability, once it comes unpackaged, it still absorbs. If you try to do this with traditional materials, uh, due to the fact that they're just melted plastic beads, hence the name melt blown polypropylene, uh, they would just crush down into a flat sheet of plastic essentially and have no absorbent space left uh, in between the fibers to be able to absorb stuff. Our stuff has a unique ability to rebound once you open the packaging and therefore continue to absorb, but take up less space whenever it's packaged to you. We also offer it uh, in just your regular bales and case form as well for those that are not concerned about space savings. <clears throat> so uh, after we develop the uh, just our regular Husky stuff to, uh, to address uh, spills on land in the outdoors, we had a lot of our customers that started to use our products under uh, persistent equipment leaks in the outdoors. And what they found due to the fact that water doesn't beat up on top and can easily pass through it, it worked a lot better when they were putting it under a persistent leak um, because uh, water be beat it up on top of traditional white pads and then the oil would leak on top of that water and then eventually the water would run off the pads and carry the oil with it. So uh, what they found was nice, the water actually passes through, the oil gets absorbed, but as with any persistent leak, uh, you tend to have uh, it drip in a single spot for an extended period of time and then eventually it wants to bleed through onto the ground. So they came to us and said, hey, it's working way better, but eventually it bleeds through onto the ground. Is there some way that you can address that? So what we did with our customers was we went out on site and we said, all right, what are you traditionally doing? Uh, so we can get a better idea of what you're using uh, with traditional products and then we can maybe come up with a better idea uh, to solve that. So here's some issues uh, that our customers uh, we're having with traditional products, you can see regular pads, um, booms, socks, and, uh, and pillows. As I was mentioned before, their major problem was, and what we found, if you notice the rain stain in the gravel, uh, the oil was essentially lifting off the pad because of the rainwater hitting it, carrying it off, and essentially reducing the effectiveness of the traditional pads by about 70%. So they were only getting about 30% usage out of their products, therefore a lot of waste, uh, as well as a lot of cost that they did need associated with it. Problem two, pads were, traditional pads were thin, uh, therefore they quickly bled through onto the ground, therefore creating another contamination issue. So they were either layering multiple pads and adding additional costs that they didn't need, uh, or it was bleeding through onto the ground and therefore that they had cleanup costs after the fact that they didn't want. And then finally, uh, after 
days, if not weeks, uh, due to exposure to UV light, a lot of the traditional pads were just turning into powder and blowing away. Therefore, uh, there was nothing left uh, to actually absorb uh, the leak under the piece of equipment. So we came up with what we call our polyback husky, uh, and this is for under your persistent outdoor equipment leaks. Uh, the, the material is the exact same as the husky that you saw before. Uh, the only difference is it has a polybacking on the back, uh, which prevents the bleed through. So once the, uh, the leak or drip hits that polybacking, it just continues to spread throughout the absorbent fibers. Uh, and instead of the water filtering directly through, it can just quickly filter out the sides. Same as the Husky materials, as I mentioned before, made from 100% recycled materials, as well as no UV degradation issues. So this video is just gonna show you uh, a comparison between our filtration Husky on the left and uh, traditional melt blown on the right. We drip six ounces of oil, a uh, half inch of rain over a two hour period. Uh, first thing you'll notice uh, on the right is within five minutes, uh, the oil is already starting to spread with, from the pad uh, and we do this within our rain chamber within our R&D facility um, so you'll notice within 30 minutes uh, you got more of a mess on your hand uh, than you thought you would uh, on the left you have everything contained to about an eighth inch diameter circle once it hits that polybacking it just tends to then spread throughout the uh, entire pad as the water is filtering out the sides on the right after two hours what was six ounces of oil looks like a five gallon spill because the rainwater just lifted and carried it off the pad. Polybacking, uh, pretty self-explanatory. Not a lot here that I need to say other than it just helps to prevent the bleed through and make sure that nothing gets onto the ground underneath the pad. And then finally, uh, the UV degradation point. Uh, if you look on the left here, melt-blown polypropylene, after about just six days of exposure to sunlight, it loses about 70% of its fiber strength. Uh, our filtration husky materials, after an entire year, 365 days of exposure, we're only losing 33% of our fiber strength. Uh, we've had some customers that have had uh, a persistent leak and a piece of polyback husky out for upwards of three years. And the only reason that they needed to replace it was because it eventually became saturated to the point where it needed to be replaced, but not due to degrading in sunlight. So here's just a couple application shots uh, from our customers, anything from uh, large, larger scale cuts uh, for underneath uh, some pretty big pieces of equipment to uh, pipeline pigs, to under small leaks and drips, just depending on the application. We also, in, in, instead of just doing it in pad and rug and roll form, uh, we also do what we call our polyback husky pan, and these come in multiple sizes, um, but it works the exact same as our regular polyback husky. Only difference is it has two inch sidewalls on it uh, in which you can hold multiple pads inside, giving it more uh, added absorbency. Uh, they can easily be replaced. And, uh, and then the way that the water actually filters out of this, as opposed to just draining out the sides like a traditional uh, polyback husky would, uh, there's small weep holes cut around the bottom rim uh, that allows the water to drain out, um, but all the filtration husky materials on the inside absorb any of the oils. And then we also do it, uh, for those of you uh, that may be in the rail industry, uh, we also do what we call our track mat. Uh, it's the exact same as the gray material that you just saw. The only reason it's black is the fact that uh, our large class one rail customers that we work with told us that they don't like to see their problems. So um, that was the only reason that we went black for them. They just didn't want to see uh, that they were leaking as much stuff as they did, but it works the exact same way. We're just pulling black fibers from the recycled material instead of gray fibers. So as we, as we developed our filtration Husky line, uh, we started getting a lot of questions from our customers. Um, well, what about cleaning up spills on water? Um, since our filtration Husky materials actually filter water, uh, they're not made to throw on a body of water. They will actually sink to the bottom. So, uh, so they came to us and said, hey, uh, we love what you're doing for our persistent leaks. We love what you're doing for our, um, for our spills on land, um, but we want to... Uh, 
we want to talk to you a little bit more about cleaning up spills on water. So our next logical question to them was, okay, what are you currently using and why don't they work? Um, so the, the first thing was uh, traditional oil only products aren't great on sheen. They'll do an okay job picking up bulk product, um, but they don't do a, a good job on, on uh, picking up the finer sheen. Uh, again, back to the space savings issue, uh, bales of pads, socks, booms, they tend to take up a lot of space. Um, they also told us, hey, we use them for a lot of wipe down applications or trying to, uh, to capture stuff on, on pavement uh, out, uh, right beside the water. And therefore, uh, they tend to shred, tear, and fall apart easily, especially whenever they're wiped across rough, rough surfaces. And if we try to wipe down any pieces of equipment or any types of tools, uh, they tend to just smear the oil. So that's what we were tasked with. And we went to work on what we call our spiltration oil chamois towels. Uh, I like to call these a rag, a wipe, and an absorbent all in one. Uh, we addressed the issue of being great working on sheen. Uh, obviously, the floating on water was a major uh, component to developing these for them, as well as uh, being highly durable and taking up about 80% less space, just like our husky materials do. So here's just a few videos showing you the different areas of what I'm talking about. Number one, uh, plucking sheen uh, from water. First thing you'll notice uh, here is uh, it does a good job both on the sheen as well as the bulk oils. So um, it'll pretty quickly. Just pick up the fines. You can see the finer swirls as well as the uh, heavier product. On, on the chamois. Second area, great for wipe down applications. Um, so a lot of our customers, obviously they're wiping down tanks, pieces of equipment, tools, and traditional uh, towels or traditional absorbents tend to just smear stuff everywhere. Nice thing about this, it has a nice drape to it. So it almost works like a rag, um, but it has just a strictly oil absorbent uh, ability to it. So it's not gonna absorb the water, but it's also not gonna smear the oil everywhere. And then finally, uh, from a durability perspective, uh, it's not gonna shred or tear easily. Um, this video is just gonna show you being wiped across pavement and removing the sheen from pavement, um, just showing you the durability aspect. So the first thing you'll notice is uh, how it does a great job of actually removing uh, the oil sheen from the pavement. But the second thing you'll notice is there's not fibers or parts of the chamois left behind. Um, it's just, highly durable, it's not gonna rip, it's not gonna shred, it's not gonna tear or fall apart easily. And again, as far as packaging options go, uh, we do them both as what we call our smoosh packaging as well as our contractor packaging. Uh, smooshed obviously for your space savings aspect. Um, you can see there on the left, that's 500 uh, oil chamois towels in a stack, that's how they would come packaged to you. So 500 total pads, you're talking about uh, 10 to 12 inches high uh, in small packages of 50 that are about an inch thick each. So once we developed the, the chamois, the next logical question from our customers was, now that you can help us clean up uh, spills on water, how, how can you help us with containing spills on water? Uh, again, we asked them, why don't you think your existing solutions are a good solution for you? Uh, and it goes back to uh, a lot of the same things that I already mentioned. Traditional absorbing booms, big, bulky, take up a lot of space. Uh, they weigh a lot and tend to be slow to deploy. Uh, the round design, uh, we found out, allows product to easily escape underneath them because you're putting a round surface or a round product on a flat surface, therefore not putting a lot of surface area in contact, uh, therefore allowing uh, the spilled product to escape underneath. And also uh, since a lot of absorbent booms are tend to be packed very tightly with pulp on the inside, uh, hence why they're called, uh, hence why they're called sock, sock and net booms. They have uh, a lot of pulp just packed inside of that sock. Uh, they never actually are able to absorb fully into the center just due to the fact that uh, they're packed so tightly. Um, so we came up with our spiltration uh, spilboa. Uh, I call this a rapid, uh, rapid deploying absorbent barrier. 
Uh, essentially, it takes up 400% less space than traditional absorbent booms. It's going to deploy 10 times faster. Uh, instead of being round, it has more of a flat design, therefore preventing the oils from escaping underneath. And it actually, uh, due to the surface area contact uh, puts within the spill, it actually absorbs completely. Made from the same material as the chamois, um, just uh, in long sheet form. So. Uh, as, as far as the space savings aspect goes, you can see here uh, traditional boom on the right, our spill boas on the left. Um, you can see 400% less space that it's going to take up. So uh, from a from a ease of deployment, rapid deployment perspective, someone can arrive in a pickup truck or grab just a couple with their hand, and, and next thing you know, you have a couple hundred feet that you can quickly deploy and get something contained. Uh, on the left, uh, once you overlap them and hook them together, overlap them by a foot and hook them together. You have about 326 net feet. On the right with traditional boom, once you overlap those by a foot and hook them together, you have about 322 net feet. So you can see the space savings aspect there, as well as uh, the speed of deployment. So I'm actually gonna, it rolls out just like a fire hose. Um, and I'll go back here so you can kind of just see this. Rolls out just like a fire hose. Um, Due to the 25 foot lengths, it allows for quicker deployment. Uh, and also since it weighs four to five times less, it doesn't require as much manpower to, uh, to carry the amount of boom that you need to quickly contain a spill on water. Again, the flat design, uh, more surface area in contact uh, with the water or ground, therefore preventing oil from escaping underneath. It also uh, allows it to be more flexible and hug the contours of the ground or choppy water, therefore uh, preventing any gaps that may cause product to escape underneath. And then finally, uh, the absorbent uh, aspect of it that I spoke about before, uh, you'll notice the uh, traditional boom on the right, as I mentioned, it's just packed so tightly with pulp that actually it never absorbs fully into the center. Uh, we found that it only actually absorbs about 30 to 40 percent. Therefore, the rest of the center is completely white and wasted product. Whereas our product, since it's uh, flat sheets of our shamming material laying in there, it gives more uh, space for the oil to actually absorb in. Therefore, you're not wasting product. You're actually using it to its fullest capacity. And uh, the different sizing options uh, that we offer, we offer what we call our skin boa, uh, just for smaller applications. They're five inches uh, diameter by 18 inches long. And then uh, the larger booms uh, for more uh, larger containment options of five inches by 10 foot and five inches by 25 foot. So after we, uh, we started working on all these products, uh, our customers came to us and started asking, uh, is there a way that you can combine all the space savings of your various products into multiple kits? Um, so what we did was we started with uh, what we call our smoosh kit. Smoosh kit is just a mixture of some of our husky and chamois materials, depending on the combination that you're looking for. This is our uh, original smoosh kit. And it has five of our husky pads, 30 of our chamois towels, and your gloves in your disposal bag. Uh, that's what it looks like on the left before we package it. On the right is how it comes to you. Um, so it's going to be about an inch thick uh, and has about 6.7 gallons worth of absorbency in it. So great for kits, for trucks on mobile equipment, trucks, um, and small spaces where you don't have a lot of storage space. Here's just a comparison to traditional three to five gallon spill kits out on the market. On the left is your, your bucket kit. On the right is your duffel kit. In the middle is what, uh, what we call our smoosh kit or original smoosh kit. Um, again, 6.7 gallons of absorbency inside of that small kit. Uh, depending on what manufacturer's lying to you, uh, you're gonna get between three and five gallons worth of absorbency in traditional uh, kits that you're seeing here. And then uh, going up in size, uh, obviously, since we can smoosh our various products into uh, smaller packaging, we go up to what we call our cubby kits. These range between 12 and 17 gallons, and they're about four inches thick each. So you can see here, we have five of our 12 to 17 gallon kits in the same space as one of a traditional nine to 12 gallon kit. So again, you get the space savings, you got the aspect of uh, products that are actually engineered for the outdoors um, and work better. 
And then finally, if you're uh, looking for larger kits in higher risk spill areas, um, we have anything from 39 gallons up to 130 gallons. But the nice thing about that is they're going to come in a space about the quarter of the size of traditional kits. So for example, here's a 20 gallon overpack. We can fit 40 gallons worth of materials inside of that 20 gallon overpack. Most competitive spill kits that come in a 20 gallon container only have about 12 to 15 gallons. Uh, here's a 50 gallon, uh, what we call our spill storm kit. We get anywhere from 80 to 130 gallons within there. Um, most people's 80 to 130 gallon is a large chest that requires about three people to move. Um, your traditional 95 gallon overpack spill kit only has about 50 to 60 gallons worth of material in there and it's about four times the size of this uh, 50 gallon container. So the next two areas that I'm going to hit on, that was kind of our, our development and, uh, and how we got uh, to developing our various spill control products. And I mentioned uh, our two categories of stormwater products. Our, our next question from one of our largest customers to us was they were using our spiltration Husky rugs for covering their storm drains and removing any sheen on site. And they asked us to uh, develop something that also would work on suspended solids with the sediment, trash, debris, all that stuff. But uh, we knew that since our spiltration Husky could filter oil out of water, uh, we went to work on developing something that also worked on the, the wide range of, of solids, such as the sediment and, uh, and debris. So what were they typically doing so we could understand how we needed to develop something that worked a little bit better, uh, either core logs, uh, witches hats or catch basin inserts, or just using oil booms and socks around their storm drain. Problem number one was uh, traditional drain inserts, they tend to uh, fill quickly with sediment and then become very difficult to lift out of the drain because they're full of 30 to 40 pounds worth of dirt. And, uh, and they become a maintenance nightmare because every time you have to lift the grate, you have to get two or three people or a piece of equipment to lift them out. And it just becomes a uh, maintenance nightmare. Problem two, uh, existing solutions didn't tend to work on oils or sheen uh, because they are just a geotextile. They tend to not have any real oil absorbent ca capacity. So uh, they're capturing the sediment fine, but they're still allowing oils and sheen to pass through the filter. And then number three, any of the existing solutions that were above grade uh, tended to not last very long because they degraded in sunlight. So we came up with what we call our above drain stormwater filter. Uh, top layer is just a heavy duty industrial netting. This heavy duty industrial netting um, allows uh, it to be driven over. Um, so it's not gonna rip up and tear uh, the fiber, uh, the spiltration husky fibers underneath. The middle layer is our spiltration husky fibers that will filter oils, fuels, and bulk sediment out of, uh, out of the storm water while also being highly UV resistant so it won't degrade. And then the overflow hole in the center is there in the event that you have some sort of flash flood scenario. In that case, you're not as worried about capturing contaminants. You just don't want your facility to flood. Um, so that allows the, um, the water to quickly evacuate site. Um, it also sits on top of the drain. So that makes it a very easy, uh, easy maintenance product because uh, number one, you can see when it's time to be replaced. Number two, if it does start to clog, uh, you don't actually have to lift the grate. You can actually a lot of times just go out and broom off some of the debris which is causing it to clog and just leave it down. So again, just some close ups here, uh, drive over durability with the heavy duty industrial netting, uh, silt and setter removal capabilities, and sheen removal capabilities. And then we also uh, have a line of products that are great for lining ditches and outfalls. Uh, this is one of our uh, rail customers. They were having problems with, uh, with readings of total suspended solids above 300 parts per million. Uh, we quickly, by lining a few of their ditches and outfalls, got them down to under consistently 17 parts per million. Then the final area uh, that we address is what we call uh, sheen in our secondary uh, containment stormwater. So 
So some of the problems with existing solutions that were out on the market, we started asking our customers, number one was every time it rained, they would go out and manually drain uh, the stormwater out of their secondary containment. They would take a look at it. If there was no visible sheen in it, they would open the valve and stand there and wait for you know, dozens, if not hundreds of gallons of water to drain out, which could be very time consuming. Sometimes uh, a lot of our customers said that they would obviously open the drain since there was a lot of water in there, they would walk away and go back to doing their daily jobs uh, and forget to close the valves, therefore creating a problem of potentially whatever piece of equipment or uh, potential for leak inside of that secondary containment to escape. Um, obviously the oily sheen on top of stormwater, they're calling in uh, expensive vac trucks to vac and haul that away. Also being in the outdoors, uh, a lot of those drains tend to clog with debris and sediment pretty quickly. And if they were using a uh, existing petroleum filter valve on the market, it tend to clog pretty quickly with that sediment because there was no sort of pre-filter system. So they were replacing these costly petroleum filter valves quite frequently. Um, so we came up with what we call our Drainiac. Um, our Drainiac is actually, um, <clears throat> as opposed to our filtration husky materials, which is a fiber um, that filters oil out of water, this is actually a, a proprietary set of polymers inside of that filter valve that actually filters out uh, oily sheen from stormwater. Uh, in the event that a spill does happen inside of that secondary containment structure, the polymers inside of this will swell up and shut off immediately, uh, therefore not allowing any product to escape. Um, we've also developed a, uh, a pretty unique uh, pre-filter system that goes on the inside of the secondary containment structure to prevent it from prematurely clogging with sediment or debris. And then obviously uh, this eliminates the high cost to pump and haul any sheen water because you can essentially just use it as, a, uh, as an oil water separator. So how does it work? I'm gonna show you two, two snippets here. Uh, the first is just showing you how it quickly shuts off uh, when fuel is passed through it. So here we're just doing diesel. Um, died, obviously, so you can see it. And uh, it'll zoom in here in a second and show you a close-up. But the first thing you'll notice is as soon as it's poured in, as I mentioned before, uh, the polymers on the inside instantly swell up and shut off. So you're not going to have any product escaping. And then the second uh, scenario is uh, showing you filtering the oil out of water. So here we have, again, diesel and uh, water mixture. And this is Pat from our R&D facility. So Pat, uh, if you... If you start working with us and you want to develop some new products, Pat's going to be our guy, our go-to guy. He's great at, at helping us develop products. He's been with us a very long time. So, uh, But the first thing you'll notice here is, uh, number one, just clean water passing through and how quickly it can actually pass through. But number two, uh, there is no sheen or, um, or fuel that escapes through uh, the filter valve. And these have been tested uh, non-detect um, with the wide range of hydrocarbons uh, that we market them for. So um, these have been tested by an independent laboratory and uh, the water that gets through has been non-detect. And as I mentioned before, um, we do uh, some unique sets of pre-filter systems, uh, depending on the setup of your secondary containment. A lot of times the valve uh, is on the exterior of containment. Um, so we do have a system for the interior containment pre-filter system that you can put down. It's what we call our sheen fence sheets here. They'll filter out any of the fines uh, and, uh, and some of the bulk actual uh, oils and fuels as well. Um, so that'll uh, allow water to pass through, capture any of that to uh, hopefully prevent uh, the petroleum filter valve from prematurely clogging the sediment. 
uh, as well as our silt trap socks, with, which uh, allow water to pass through, but they just hold back any of the large debris and sediment to prevent them from going down the drain. And then a lot of times our customers will have an internal sump inside of their secondary containment. So in that case, uh, obviously the uh, filter valve is gonna be mounted on the interior with inside the sump. So what we've done is a pre-filter sleeve that goes over top of that and prevents uh, it from prematurely clogging as well. This is just made from our filtration husky materials. So again, does a great job of filtering out uh, any of the, the bulk product before it can get into the petroleum filter valve as well as any of the sediment. Um, We've, I'll give you the best example of this. We have an electric utility client that uses these uh, on every one of their substations. Um, they were replacing an existing petroleum filter valve once every six to eight weeks uh, at $2,500 uh, per replacement. Uh, we have extended the life of our petroleum filter valve for them to 18 months. Um, and ours only cost half of what that does. So we actually uh, just did a big case study with one of our customers that I'm talking about. Uh, we saved them nearly eighty thousand uh, dollars last year alone. So, and then we also go into more complex solutions. So uh, remote sites uh, where people may not be checking um, or where they don't actually have any type of drainage system uh, on their secondary containment for whatever reason. Um, we've done self-pumping systems, which uh, if you look on the left here, uh, this is a sump that's inside of their secondary containment. Uh, the red thing that you see floating there is actually, uh, it's a heater that melts the ice and just floats around on there uh, to make sure that it doesn't ice over uh, in cold climates. Uh, in the box in the center uh, is our pre-filter system and then our petroleum filter valve uh, mounted to the exterior, which is going to do what I just showed you in the previous slides. Awesome. Thanks so much for that uh, presentation, Troy. That was uh, definitely wholesome. And we, uh, we just uh, are going to finish here in the nick of time. Um, I only have one question uh, from Wes Bell, and I'll let you answer it, Troy. I think I know the answer already, but just in regards of disposal, um, how would you suggest that? And is there any difference in disposal options uh, for your technology versus what's available on the market? So with our uh, spill tracing products or spill cleanup, um, you're not going to have any uh, disposal concerns or any different disposal concerns than traditional absorbents. Uh, in the States, uh, it's the paint filter test, right? So if it's hung up for, I, I believe it's five minutes and it's not dripping uh, and it's not a hazardous material, then it can actually just go uh, directly into the waste stream. Uh, obviously, if it's, uh, if it's still dripping, then you may want to add a few more absorbents to whatever packaging you're using for disposal just to make sure that it's uh, fully absorbed up. But no, you're not going to have any different uh, any different disposal concerns than you would with traditional absorbents. It's also uh, great for waste energy facilities, so it can actually go to a waste energy facility, which a lot of our clients like about it um, and use for that purpose as well. Perfect, awesome. Well, thanks for uh, again your time and and uh, you know giving us this great overview of the product line. Of course, Delta is really proud to be offering this throughout uh, our global markets and of course here in Canada. Um, did anyone have anything they wanted to discuss? We've got a few minutes here. I know Troy and I can definitely hang around. Uh, if anyone did want to have a chat, uh, you can just use the raise hand button and uh, we can have a chat. Otherwise, uh, if there's no other questions, no other chat, uh, we'll probably wind this up. And again, uh, thanks everyone for attending. I know that it's a, a busy time and we spend lots of time looking at screens already. Uh, so really happy to uh, have you join us today. And uh, Billy from uh, Delta will be following up with an email with the link to uh, a YouTube video. Feel free to share that with anyone. Uh, as Barry asked, if you're interested in pricing uh, or the product catalog, we've got that all provided uh, in electronic form. And so just send me an email. My email is on the left and I'll be happy to send you pricing and information uh, around. I've got one. Uh, Christine Lamont is asking about trial or sample packs. Um, I think that, you know, Christine, I'll be happy to reach out to you and, and discuss what your, 
uh, company needs. And, and yeah, we we're happy to, uh, you know, provide a trial so that you can see it work uh, in real time. So I'll reach out to you to, to discuss that uh, further. But um, yeah, happy to uh, answer any other questions if anyone's got any last minute burning questions. All right, great. Well, then thanks everyone for joining us and um, feel free to reach out anytime if you've got questions regarding remediation, bioremediation, uh, detection of hydrocarbons in real time, or of course, any of the Hale and Hardy product line that we'll be offering. Awesome. Thank you, everyone. Have a great day.